Amen. Amen. Now, uh, I want you to stay on your feet and I want you to turn to the 25th chapter of Exodus. And we're going to start reading at um, verse 10. And we're going to read down to verse 22. You with me? Exodus 25, 10. And we're going to read down to verse 22. And we're going to read it aloud together. All right. Ready, read. And they shall make an ark of shittim wood, two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubic and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubic and a half the height thereof. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, within and without shalt thou overlay it, and shall make upon it a crown of gold round about. And thou shalt cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in the four corners thereof and two rings shall be in the one side of it, and two rings in the other side of it. And thou shalt make staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark, that the ark may be borne with them. The staves shall be in the rings of the ark, they shall not be taken from it. And thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give you and you shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubics and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubic and a half the breadth thereof. And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold, of beaten work shall you make them in the two ends of the mercy seat, and make one cherub on the one end, and the other cherub on the other end. Even of the mercy seat shall you make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubim shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another. Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And there I will meet with you, and I will commune with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I give thee in commandment to the children of Israel. Now I want you to turn to Hebrews 9 with me. All right, um, Hebrews chapter nine, you with me? We're gonna start reading at uh, verse one. And we're gonna read down to nine. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant and over it the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now, when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, 
not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way unto the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the sacrifice perfect as pertaining to the conscious. Now we want to talk about this. This this was not my plan, and so, uh, but the Holy Ghost began to speak this while we were praising Him, honoring um, the blood of Jesus. If we're going to walk by faith, if we're going to live as who we are, there has to be a strong revelation in us of the blood, the work of the blood of Jesus. We've got to be able to see this, seeing this and receiving this revelation is going to cause you to act, think, and speak in a completely different way. So we must see this, amen? Seeing we must have a revelation, amen? So we just yield, open yourselves up to receive this revelation, all right? You can be seated. All right, so we're just going to use some props. And um, they made this Ark of the Covenant. It's nice and gold. I don't have a top, but we're going to just, we're just going to work it out. You've got to be able to see. I'm going to try to get you to see this this morning. So we've got this Ark of the Covenant that was made. And the covenant is what God had promised. Does anybody know what the covenant is? What did God promise? What did God promise you? What is your covenant? All right, so God said that I will bless you and make you a blessing, and I will protect you. I will make your name great, and through you all the nations of the world will be blessed. All right, so you've got to know your covenant. What did God promise you? So in here, this Ark of the Covenant, they placed um, the tables of stone. What is the tables of stone? The commandments, the Ten Commandments, the thou shalt nots, right? And those commandments were placed in here. Those were guidelines for them to go by on how to live their life. And then what else did Hebrews tell you was placed in here? the rod of Aaron, Aaron's stick, right? It was just an old stick, old piece of wood. But what, did, what was so significant about that piece of wood? It was the authority, right? It was the, the represented the authority of God. And what did it do? What did Aaron's rod do? It budded. And what was so important about it budding? Because it wasn't planted. It was just a piece of wood. It was a stick, and yet it gave life. Because the word of God is life-giving, amen? Jesus is the giver of life. He'll turn that dead into new. And what else was placed in here? The, the manna was placed in here. And why, why manna? What was the manna? Provision, that's right. So it was man's need for God, right? Man's sin, the tablets. And man's need to submit to the authority of God. It was a reminder, and it was put in here. All right? And so now I'm going to flip it over and pretend like this is the top now, and that there's the Ark of the Covenant on the bottom. Stay with me, okay? So then he had to put a top on it. And what did God call the top? You should put on it a what? The mercy seat. He called it, a, he covered it with what? So inside of here is your what? And shortcomings and needs, right? And then he placed over top of that his, his mercy. God's mercies are new how often? So they never run out, all right? So now just think about this. Get your own little Ark of the Covenant, amen? And put all of your sin in it you have a memory of it and it's in there 
And then he placed over that his mercy. All right? The mercy seat. Now, what, what is on the mercy seat? What, what did he tell them to put on this mercy seat? On both ends, they were what? They were cherubims. And the cherubims did what? They stretched their wings out over it. That covering. It's a cover. All right? The cherubims did what? Covered. So they, did, they were doing what with the sins? Covering them. Right? They were covering them. And God says, I'm going to meet you where? At the mercy seat. He says, I'm coming to meet you at the mercy seat. Amen. And we have these cherubims. I, I could even imagine so much that the cherubims was the protection between you and God. I'm going to protect my people from me until I can get them where they need to be. All right. Now, when the priest came into the, the, the um, holiest place, he came in with what? What did Hebrews say? He couldn't come in without what? Without what? Blood. Right? Come on, look at it. He says in verse 7, but until the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood. Are you with me? Not without blood. Why did he have to take blood in there with him? Because it was a sacrifice for sin. That blood was poured on that mercy seat. It was sprinkled on the mercy seat, all right, to cover the sin, right? And what else did he say that he had in there? He had the incense. The incense was burning, and it came up as what? Smoke. So there's the smoke. There's the blood. They're the cherubims. And God is coming right there to the, that place to meet with you. Now, during those days, the priest had to do it for everybody. But pay attention, all right? So now there's the, the room is filled with smoke and the blood is there. So, so where, where is the sin? Can't see it. The room is filled with smoke. You can't see the sin. You can see the blood because you can smell that blood. So you can, the blood has covered over it. It is not there. God was positioning us to make sure he could receive us. Are you with me? Now, individuals have a hard time today wanting to accept the fact that the redemption covers them, clears them, sets them free. Well, God... God has done this, and, and in verse 8 it says that the Holy Ghost is signifying that the way to the holiest hadn't been made yet, because they did this how often? Every year. So for a solid year, you were straight. <laughs> then they come back in there and get you straight for another year. All right? Now let's, let's start at verse 10. You with me at verse 10, Hebrews 9? Let's read this together. It says, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Now pay attention. He says, now, the high priest had to come in here every year. You got your sin? Pay attention to your sin. It's in there. What you did yesterday, this morning, last week, last night, last, it's in here has a covering over it, the mercy seat, has the angels protecting you, <laughs> amen? Then he says, the high priest, who is Jesus, came in. He did not come in with the blood of bulls and goats. He came with his own holy blood, his own sanctified blood, his own power filled blood and he came in one time 
unto the holy of holies. So therefore, he didn't come into the tabernacle that was made with hands. Is that what the scripture says? It says that he came into the tabernacle not made with hands. Hallelujah. And he took his blood and he poured it out. One time for all time for all people. So now we've got the blood part. I'm covered in the blood. So now when father looks at me, what is he seeing really? The Bible says that love does what with sin covers a multitude of sin, right? Covers it, covers it, covers it. If something is covered, can you see it? It's covered. So all you see is love, love in his blood, blood, love. All God can see is love. All he can see is what he has made himself able to see. And so he purposed, just like he put the, the, cherubim and the blood and the smoke, the incense, he purposed to only see that. He told us that once you receive Jesus as Savior, you have to be what? Filled with the Holy Ghost. So there was smoke and there was blood, right? There was his voice. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came, there was smoke, there was a sound, there was the fire of God, right? And there was a voice. When you're born again and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, there's the blood, there's the smoke or the fire of the Holy Ghost, and there is a sound. That's your sound. That's why you speak in other tongues. That's if you're unctioned by the Holy Ghost to seal this thing, to get this settled so we can keep going in who we really are. All right? Now, God is causing us to see this. If we're going to walk by faith, you can't be guilt conscious. If you're guilt conscious, you're not going to walk by faith because you're busy remembering and thinking about what you've done. Now, what did John teach us in 1 John? He taught us that if you've sinned, what's supposed to happen? What did John teach us? He says, you repent and the blood of Jesus will what? Cleanse you of that unrighteousness. And God is faithful, did he not say? To forgive. That mercy seat situation. So I am, I am, you are the Ark of the Covenant. All of that sin has been covered over. The Holy Ghost, the blood of Jesus has been applied here. God purposes this. So why is it so important that we share? I, you, are walking, living epistles. Isn't that what Paul called us? Or Peter, one of them called us that, living epistles, probably Peter. So you've got to recognize that you are the walking, living Ark of the Covenant. And that when you begin to share with someone what God has done in your life, you're testifying to that fact. And you are sharing with them that they have the same opportunity that you have to be the Ark of the Covenant, to have the blood of Jesus on your life, to have the Holy Ghost filling you, consuming you inside and out and walking with God, free from all sin. You, with a revelation of this, will believe and do everything this word says. See, the, per, the, the reason the doing doesn't occur is because of the place of the conscious mind. And that place is, but I've done this and this. And even I know I repented and I know God forgives me, but I've done this and this. And you see that your mind is on 
the natural rather than on who you are. God says, I'm going to meet you at the mercy seat. And then we were instructed by Paul to come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy because it's the mercy seat. He says, I'm going to always meet you at the mercy seat. That didn't change. I'm going to always meet you at the mercy seat. Now we can understand more clearly as we're receiving this revelation. Just pause and say, I received the revelation. Thank you, Holy Ghost. This is becoming real to me. I can walk in this. Hallelujah. So now as we, as we see this, we can see why it's so important. Just forgive the people. Because if they go to the mercy seat before God, he's going to forgive them. So you might as well forgive them, right? We can't judge that, right? So we're going to do this. So let's, let's take this deeper than that. Let's forgive ourselves. Let's forgive ourselves and stand up and be who we are. Let's, let's really believe this, that what Jesus did is for real, and it's for all time, and it's for me. Let's believe that. Instead of it, it being for that person over there, I'm not sure how it's going to work in my life because of. Amen? The blood of Jesus is still is as powerful as the day it flowed out of his veins. It has never lost its power. And it never will. It has never lost its power. If we, the justified, are going to live by faith, we're going to have to absorb this. We cannot walk sometimes in the spirit and sometimes in the natural. We cannot walk sometimes in faith and sometimes in doubt. We must come to the place where there's only one way for us to walk. Only one way for us to live. Only one way for us to think. Only one way for us to believe and not waver. We must look at this. Oh, that's my necklace. I was like, I'm hearing noise. Let me turn it around because I don't like to hear that noise. We must look at this the way it really is and believe it. So then, then, then if you believe this, wait a minute, let me finish reading this and then I'll say that. Go back to Hebrews 9 with me. Verse 12, we'll read it again. I want you to read it with me, okay? Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us. This is eternal redemption. It's not a moment by moment redemption. It's eternal. I recognize that some people are telling you, well, you might be saved today, but you might be unsaved tomorrow. But it's an eternal redemption. If I have received this, I have received this. I am eternally redeemed. We're going to have to settle this if we're going to be children of the Most High God doing the works of Jesus. You can't do the work of Jesus thinking in the morning you're not going to be saved no more. How in the world are you going to walk in his footsteps or walk beside him and walk with him and advance the kingdom thinking that as soon as I make a mistake, then all is lost and I've got to start all back over and hope God will receive me. He says that he has obtained eternal redemption. Let's shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm eternally redeemed. That, that redemption means I've been bought out of Satan's camp. The blood of Jesus has taken care of this for me. And now it is my obligation. It is my honorable duty to Jesus to live in his camp. And not go to Satan's camp for anything. Amen. And we all have to throw our hands up and say, God, have mercy on me.
because knowingly and unknowingly, we marched over into Satan's camp to try to get something done rather than sticking it out in God's camp and finding out how to do it and doing it by faith. Amen. And see, as we begin to see this and, and the reality of what Jesus has done, we can easily keep our knees bowed to the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have to go over there to because it's quick and easy and they'll do it for me. No, I'm not going over there. I'm sticking with you, Jesus. And by revelation and by meditation and by understanding and by insight, by ideas, by concepts, by the Holy Ghost, I'm going to learn to live in this kingdom that you put me in. Come on now. We see it in the natural. You get people out of uh, prostitution, out of drug addiction, out of alcoholism. And you find them going back over there when th stuff gets going tough. Because that's what they know, and I can do this. We do that in the kingdom. We go right back into the natural things because, you know, I know that. No, we got to stick it out and learn and overcome. Jesus has paid a wonderful price. Let us honor him properly. Let us honor the blood of Jesus properly. That blood has covered me. I am free from sin. Hallelujah. And everything that you have done, everything that you might even mess up for, the blood of Jesus is right there. God made sure of it. Thank you, Father. Now let's read it. Let's keep reading verse 13. He says, for, read with me. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Praise the name of the Lord. How much more? Think about this, what he's saying. He says that if God would accept those people for a whole year by the blood of a cow or a goat and call them righteous for the whole year, how much more the blood of Jesus that has gone into the mercy seat in heaven and has cleansed the heavenly holy of holies and have cleansed us. He says, how much more will it not only cleanse me of sin, but it will cleanse this sin nature in my mind so that I can live the life that God is wanting me to live. And see this, we've got to embrace it. We've got to embrace this with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. We've got to meditate on this. We've got to hold this. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the body of Jesus. It's the work of Jesus. See, when we receive communion, it isn't so that you can break a little crack and eat it and drink some juice and say, okay. But it's for you to remember, to you, for you to acknowledge Jesus' blood is the reason why I'm living a good life. It's his body that has caused me not to have to go through pain and suffering and sickness and disease. Thank you, Jesus. And it is an honoring of the Lord Jesus for what he has done. Think about this. You know, I just had this situation where I'm doing something for somebody. And I felt like, and it really bothered me. They were not taking care of my property the way they needed to be. And, and I took it as you're not appreciating what I'm doing for you, right? If you do something for somebody, you want an appreciation to be shown to you. You know, it's not that they got to bow down to you and ha, oh, whoa, oh, oh. not that, but just a thank you. It's the manner that they handle you, right? What do you think about Jesus? How are we handling him? How are we showing an appreciation for what he's done for us? And so um, when he said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. I could hear that. Could you please remember? Could you? I'm getting ready to let these people beat me and crucify me for you. I didn't do anything wrong, but you did. But I'm going to take the penalty so you don't have to. Could you please remember that? Could you honor me? Could you thank me? 
Think about that. What we live, our pleasure. This is why I vote. This is why I do my best to be honorable and get the Holy Ghost to forgive me when I'm not, you know? Because people died so that my little black skin could walk around in peace. And I honor what they did for me. And it is very disheartening to me to see this miseducation of black people occurring. After the, the fights and the little girl, I can't think of her name, she's a woman, you know, she grew up eventually, she didn't stay a little girl, but it happened to her as a little girl. A child being harassed and humiliated trying to go to school, standing up so that everybody has the right to go to school and be educated. Then we should show some honor and some respect and appreciation by going to school and studying and, and learning what's being taught to us because people died trying to get that done. You understand what I'm saying? I see it like this. Now, I recognize some people don't care. They don't care if their children go to school. They don't care if their children learn and the children don't care. But I care. And I believe that, that, that we as a people of God must honor what Jesus has done, but it's difficult to honor something you don't know. And we've got to see this. The blood of Jesus has set us free. That we can live. We can live. We can have. What this book says is for us. It's not be for us because we're black people. It's for us because we're children of God. And it's for any person, whether they're black, whether they're white, whether they're American or African, whether they're European, whether they're Asian. It doesn't matter where you're from, where you live, how you're born, it matters nothing. If you will accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior, if you will start your journey of walking by faith and not by sight, you can have exactly what God wants you to have because God wants you to have it. Do you understand? God wants us to be free. He put provision, authority. Now, what we've got to understand is, is very simple. God is the authority in our life. And until you bow your knees to that authority, you're going to try to work things out in the natural, and it's not going to happen good for you. When you bow your knee to the lordship of Jesus Christ, that's when your life can take on a new, fresh meaning. Amen? It can take on freshness, aliveness, hope now, because God is in control. He says in verse 14, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living call, God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Jesus is the mediator. This is why I teach you, go to Jesus and have a conversation with him. What's a mediator? He's the person that stands in between. You know, the, the cherubim that was there, the high priest, he stands in between. He's going to bring these two sides together. God and man, and he's God and he is man. So he understands us both. Perfect mediator to bring us together. Now, if you receive this, then what does Romans 10, 17 say? Come on, loud. Loud, I want to hear you. Loud. Yeah, you don't have to just be quiet when one person say it. Everybody can say it. If you don't know it, I can understand why you don't say it. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
Now, the word of God has been presented, right? Your faith should have been rising over the fact that what? What should your faith have been coming up on this morning? I'm guilt free. What'd you say? I'm redeemed. What'd you say? God is with me. So your faith begins to rise in this because your consciousness is going to always try to impose on you your wrong, your shortcoming, your inabilities. But faith should rise. It doesn't matter because I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And because I am filled with the Holy Ghost, God will handle those shortcomings. Faith cometh. What is faith doing this morning? Faith is coming. And what does Habakkuk 2, 4 tell us? Come on loud. Holler it to me. The just shall live by his faith. When you know this, you can live by it. Right? When you know I am redeemed, the blood of Jesus cleanses me. There's no more conscious of sin. You see what he said here? Verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ purge your conscience from dead works? Purge your conscience, purge your conscience, purge your conscience. Thank you, Jesus, for purging my conscience from dead works that I may serve the living God. You see how you do this? You receive it in. And there's, there should be a boldness. If you believe something, you're bold about it. Is that true? Can you be bold about something you believe? Well, can, can, can you be bold that you're redeemed? Can you be bold that your consciousness has been cleansed by the blood of Jesus? Can you take hold of this and tell it to somebody else? It's one thing that's, uh, you know, I believe it. But now you got to say it out loud to somebody else. Can you do that? In the face of them reminding you of your wrong. In the face of them reminding you of your shortcoming. Can you boldly proclaim, I am redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And he has cleared my conscience with his blood. Is there a boldness in you to say that? Is there a boldness in you to walk in that? What about when you're in prayer? And the thoughts come in. That's not going to happen for you because. And start showing you what you did and tell what you said and how you did it and how you were wrong. Now where is your boldness? Is it dwindling and sliding up under the door? Going on out? Or do you have a word to say back to those thoughts? I am redeemed. That has been covered and cleansed. Father doesn't see it and I don't either. That's not my thought. I believe in my heart what I am saying. I'm confessing it with my mouth. It is in accordance to God's word. And I walk by faith and not by sight. You see how this comes together? You see how critical this is for us? We're going to live by faith, are we not? Who's living by faith? Hey, man, I'm living by faith. Hey, man, in every day, every moment, it gets what? Stronger, more clear more confident and it gets down in you to where you're not going to move who's going to move off of their faith no we're not moving off of it now he's going to try to push you over and if he pushes you over what's going to happen to you you're going to get up that's what you're going to do and do it again you're going to get up and do it again we don't stop we don't quit we don't cave in do we do we stop do we quit do we cave in we got help, don't we? Glory to God. You seeing this? Is it working in your life? What's Romans 10, 9, and 10 tell us? Very good. We got to get this inside of us because we, we are responsible to share. You, you are now the Ark of the Covenant walking around. <laughs> you are the testimony, right, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we've got to get this that we know that, that you must believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth. You must believe that Jesus came in the flesh. 
And when you share this with someone, you're just telling them what he's done in your life and then giving them that same opportunity to have him do it in theirs. That's all you're doing. When you talk about how he helped you with a situation, whatever that situation is, how, he over, how you overcame through his help, healed your body, soothed your mind, changed the situation, whatever it was, when you're sharing that, you're telling them you have that same opportunity that I have. God will do the same thing for you that he's doing for me. Receive Jesus as your savior. Or if they're born again, well, you got to receive the Holy Ghost. You got to speak in tongues. You got to have this power because Jesus said that he's the, the power that causes us to witness. And your witness is weak without this power. Because with the power of the Holy Ghost, miraculous things are happening in your life. Amen. And you want the miraculous, don't you? We want to see God every moment, every day, every second, something good, something exciting, something out of the ordinary. Amen. And we can do that because the Holy Ghost, right? You're telling them that. Believe it in your heart. But then you're telling them past that. This is the way we receive in the kingdom of God. Everything comes by believing it in your heart and speaking it out of your mouth. Everything comes like that in the kingdom. You believe it in your heart? Well, how does the believing start? It starts from the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith begins where the will of God is known. So we believe what we read. We read the Bible. Hallelujah. We read the Bible. Very interesting to read. Very fun book to read. And it's filled with power. And as we read it, our faith comes. And as our faith comes, we begin to speak that which we believe. And then we begin to see that which we believe that we have spoken. Amen? That's the way it is. We have a, a, an obligation to Jesus. He asks us to continue this for him. Now, if you honor his blood and honor his life that he gave for you, you'll share with someone what he's doing for you. And so now you want to begin to say, Lord, help me to honor you better. I want to share this. I want my life to show that you're my provider, that you have authority in my life and that I honor you. I want my life to show that you are alive. I want people to see my life and see you. All right. You with me? Because the way we act is going to help that. What does Hebrews 11, 1 say? Hebrews 11, 1. Amen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the substance. Faith is the living proof that it even exists. Faith is the proof that it even exists. It's the evidence of the things that we do not see. We walk how? By faith. We're going to live by how? Faith. We're the justified, and the justified must live by their faith. Amen? What does Romans 1, 17 say? The just shall live by faith. We're going to do this, aren't we? Every day. Matter of fact, we're going to take the, pres the future out and put it into the present, right? We are doing this. I live by faith. Say it. Every moment. Every day. I live by faith. Amen. Amen. I live by faith. All right, you with me? What does 1 John 5 and 4 say? Whatsoever is born of God does what? Overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Right? What, what causes you to overcome in these situations you're faced with right now? Your faith in operation. What is it, Hebrews 11, 6? Without faith, it is impossible to believe, please God, for he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. We must believe this, right? This, this is the confidences that we have. And this is what John told us, 1 John 5, 14. He says, this is the confidence that we have in him, that we, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And we know that if he hears us, we have the petition that we required of him, right? 
It's our confidence. We build our confidence on God's word. We build our confidence on what he has done and what he has said. And through the scriptures, he's proving out to us that he wants us prosperous. He wants us healthy. He wants us in good relationships. He wants us winning the loss and teaching his people his ways. He wants us taking healing to his people. He wants us to walk in freedom from Satan's control. This is what God wants. We're just agreeing with him. Putting our faith in the mix and having it happen in our life. Amen? Just agreeing with God. Is it hard to agree with God? Sometimes there's a challenge that you face, isn't it? Because while you're busy trying to agree, you have, what are those things Jesus told you out of Mark 4 that you have trying to get you not to agree? Satan coming immediately to take it out of your, your heart and then the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things and offenses. You are faced with them every day, aren't you? Somebody wants to offend you. <laughs> You got to hurry up and quickly, quickly forgive, quickly, quickly. Don't let that stuff fester inside of you. Don't let it get down in there and take any roots. Because if it takes root, there's a root of bitterness that will spring up and defile many. And you don't want that, do you? So forgive quickly. Let the matter drop quickly. Keep walking in love. Keep walking in love. Keep walking in love because faith works by love. Amen. It's the force of faith because it's the force of love. God is love. And so we're going to stay on his side, aren't we? Are you learning anything this morning? And what does Galatians 5, 6 tell us? Right. Circumcision doesn't avail anything nor uncircumcision, but faith, which works by love. That's what's the producer. Faith, which works by love. Say, I walk by faith. I don't walk by sight. Amen. What's Galatians 2.20? You remember? I am crucified with Christ. You remember that? Nevertheless, I, I live, yet not I, but I live by the faith of the Son of God. You get that? Who loved me and gave himself for me? Remember that one, okay? Galatians what? 2.20. We live this life that we live in the flesh. We live it by the faith of Jesus Christ. What? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have to pause. This life I'm living, this life you're living, you're living it by what? You're living it by what? You're living it by the faith of Jesus. You mean to tell me that you don't even have to work up your own faith, just grab a hold of his? What kind of faith does Jesus have? Can Jesus solve those problems with his faith in your life? You, you should meditate on that. Wait a minute, I'm not living by this, just any old kind of faith. I'm living by the faith of the Son of God. This is Jesus' faith. Jesus' faith caused all these millions of people to be born again for all these thousands of years. It's Jesus' faith. I'm standing in Jesus' faith. Think about that. Wait a minute now. You, you look at your faith and you say, oh, my faith. It is, it's, it's growing, it's growing. But then when you say, yes, it is. But I'm standing in Jesus' faith. I'm locking into the faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's the faith I have. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your faith. I walk and live in your faith. All right. See, these things take some time of study and meditation, right? You want to develop in it. See, this is why I'm encouraging you to study, to read, to pray, to fellowship. Take you some time every day and go through this so that your muscles can get stronger. You know, I decided that I was gonna exercise this body because we got some more years to go, 60 more years of the rapture, whichever comes first. So we, we gotta have a good strong body. And I've just been doing it for just these 
five days, I guess. But I noticed, because even though I had surgery, I still did my exercises. I said, you know, God's good. It's a great testimony. I had this surgery, and it's the most blessed thing. It's just like I didn't even have the surgery almost. I didn't feel the weakness that I did before, the pain that I did before, the just can't speak that I did, just nothing. It was just wonderful. I thank God for it. I even exercised on the same day that I had surgery and was able to do it. But I noticed that I can do twice as much in some of the exercises that I did when I started. It's growing. My body is, is responding well. As you study, your faith is going to respond well to the word. And where you were, you'll find quickly you're moving. You're just jumping, jumping to another levels because you're using it. I want you to use this faith. Amen? Use your faith. Use it for something because you, you want to see that it's moving, all right? If you say, I'm just going to believe God for uh, my water bill to be paid. I'm just, the money's going to come in. You say, yeah, I know I have, the, I have it in my account. But I'm, I'm going to believe God for the water bill amount to come in. Every month, I believe I receive my water bill being supernaturally paid. Father, I look to you as my source. You've got to start exercising this faith. Because if all you do ever do is ever just go to the bank and get your money and pay your bills, then where you have an opportunity for growth. Amen? It says, I trust you, Lord. And it's the day before, and you, you should be constantly looking. So when you find coins on the ground, collect them up. When somebody says, oh, I'll, um, I'll pay that for you. Oh, I receive. Well, take that same money and put it aside because that was your supernatural provision. And you will see that God is providing. You with me? When he does this, come on, come on, stick with me. When God provides that for you like that, Take that same money, take it out of that account, and put it aside because that was your supernatural provision. And you need to be able to see, to document, to account for how God is providing for you to increase your faith. You must then share this testimony with somebody so that it can get strong inside of you. You with me? Anybody understanding? All right, what's Hebrews 10, 38? Hebrews 10, 38. Now the just shall live by faith. Let's get these things in us. Meditate on them. Get them in you, all right? What you want to do? Meditate to do what? Get it inside of you. Look with me at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You with me? Second Corinthians chapter five. Verse seven. What does verse seven say? Read it out loud together. So read it again. We walk by faith. We don't walk by sight. What do we walk by and not by? All right, so now let's, um, let's take this. How are you going to apply this, which you've heard this morning, to your life? All right, how are you going to apply it? We've, we've, we're talking about living by faith. We're talking about the fact that the blood of Jesus has covered over, wiped away, eternally done away with this problem that we had in being able to approach Father. The sin problem is gone, and the blood of Jesus will even purge our conscience if we permit that. It'll clean our conscience out so that we can serve the living God. So in serving God, that means that we're going to be walking by faith, doing whatever it is that he's wanting us to do in our life, right? And whatever he's asked of you, he has anointed you to do it. Okay, now how are we going to take this first step? How are you going to take this first step in living this that you've heard this morning? 
Well, if, if there's some things is you've been thinking about as it's, it's hindering me, it's holding me back, this or that, whatever it is, you're going to have to now look at that and say, okay, I need to settle this right now. I need to settle the fact that I'm forgiven. I need to, I, you're going to have to talk this out between you and God. This is what I did. I feel real bad about it. You might not even feel bad about it. I did it and it's wrong. Okay, now you got to get yourself to the point where you actually feel bad enough not to do it again. Because if you don't feel bad about it, you'll do it again. You just repeat the, the, the act because there's nothing inside of you that brought any remorse for the action against God. So you want that revelation that I didn't just do this, but I did it against myself and I did this against God. And I went over to the enemy's camp as substituted Jesus for Satan in this thing. So you, we've got to begin to see how God sees these things that we do. And so now come back and, and God, I repent of that. I, and I'm settling once and for all that by your help, I'm not going back into that. This is by the help of the Holy Ghost. I'm not going back into that. And then you take forward steps only. And when the thoughts begin to come into your mind, you did this and you said this, then you are very adamant. And you hold fast. I'm not thinking that. No, I've been cleansed. Jesus has cleansed me. Thank you, Jesus. I'm continuing walking with you. All right? We're doing that. You with me? Then you apply this. Let's say it's... Uh, something God asked you to do, which we're talking about this morning, is just sharing your testimony. And you say, Lord, I, I want to show you that I am very appreciative by helping you in the kingdom. And I'd like to be able to share my testimony. So whoever you place before me that you want me to share this with, I'm receiving the boldness to do it. And I'm going to share it. I'm going to tell them how you helped me, how I was in a mess and you got me out. And I'm going to do this to your glory. You're going to get the glory out of it, Father. You have anointed me to do this. I'm going to do it and you'll get the glory. And, and if you mean that in your heart, then, then there'll be people that'll come and then you'll get a prompting. You'll just be talking to people and all of a sudden you get the thought, tell them. Now it's your opportunity with that boldness to begin to share. I just want to tell you something. That, this just came to my mind. I'm going to tell you this and just begin to share it. And you're not sharing it with, now I got to do something about it. I got to make sure they're saved. I got to make sure they're filled with the Holy Ghost. You're sharing it depending on the Holy Ghost to do what's next. You are following instructions. You want to remember that. You are following instructions. So if he says after you tell that testimony, they may begin to talk to you about it or ask questions, or they may say nothing at all. And if the Holy Spirit doesn't prompt you to go beyond that, don't. You've done what he needed you to do. If he says, well, ask them if they want to receive Jesus as Savior, go there. Ask them. Lead them in prayer. Or would you like to be filled with the Holy Ghost? Ask them and pray with them and explain. The Holy Ghost is going to come on you. You're going to be filled with power. You're going to have this unction that's going to rise up from your belly. And, and you're going to want to say something. Just don't say it in a language you know. Yield to the Holy Ghost and tongues will just flow right out your mouth. And you say it with the confidence of knowing this is what God does. Because you're not doing this. God is doing this. You're only telling them what God will do if they will receive it. You don't get people saved. You just tell people what God will do if they'll receive him. It's the same thing. You're being the channel through which he can flow. 
And so you can just say, Lord, I'm just, I'm so thankful to be a channel. I'm a vessel. I am anointed. Amen. Raise your arms with me and say that to the Lord. I am anointed. I'm an anointed vessel to the glory of God. Whatsoever God wants me to do, he has anointed me to do it. I am anointed to follow the instructions of the Holy Ghost on a level this world is not familiar with. All to the glory of God. Amen. Glory to God. You can do this in your life. You believe this? I believe it. I believe it. I hope you receive from that. It seemed like, was that a whole hour for real? It don't seem like I've been talking long enough for that to have been a whole hour. I've been here a whole hour? I was just like, I didn't even get to the... <laughs> How did that happen? But did you receive, though? Did you learn something this morning? Hey, man. We're free. We're so free. We're so free to live in him. We're so free to move in him. Isn't that wonderful? Those hands are anointed hands you got. These are some anointed hands. Look at those beautiful hands you have. The power of God resides. You can cast out devils. You can heal the sick. You can raise the dead. Why? Because you're just the channel that he's flowing through. And you are holy and sanctified. So when you know this, this helps you to live a sanctified life. It starts causing you to cut away those things that you know doesn't show any honor for what Jesus has done for you. Amen? Well, praise the Lord. I'm not ready to stop talking, but I'm going to quit. All right? It seems like I didn't get to say what I was supposed to say. I heard that little clock beep, beep, beeping. I was like, something's wrong with that. We're going to receive our offering. We're going to receive our offering this morning. Who came in here ready to share today? Did anybody come ready? You were ready to what? Yeah, did anybody pray that I wouldn't, wouldn't call on anybody to teach this morning? Nobody did? Y'all growing up. We got some mature people in my church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mature people. I love that. I, it was just a blessing. I mean, I, I feel wonderful. I feel wonderful. I work. I'm trying to get through these operational policies. Man, this is work. But I'm working on them. Because I, I can see the wonderful turnaround. I was thinking about it this morning. And what I have been praying. And, and you know, that, that one girl, she's still in my heart about being a director. I said, yeah, and then move Mahone into where she can do some certain things. That girl can do some things. We'll be free in this ministry. I mean, I, I could just see it. And, and I'm excited that God is helping us. You know, we get these manuals done and people trained. It's working. I, I don't care what I see. I know I'm going to go by what faith, right? We walk by what? Faith and not by sight. Amen? So we don't care what we see. Then we say what we know, right? It's working. It's strong inside of me. It's strong inside of me. Anybody giving to the building fund this morning? Amen. Give to the building fund this morning. There's a, um, you know, I'm encouraging you to give to the building fund. We're going we're gonna to have some money. I'm just calling for it. I'm calling for money in this ministry with my faith. I want you to call for it too, amen? You call for it so God can give it to you, but you also call for it so God can just send it, that people can send it to us. We just release our address into the spirit. 
1204 Picard Street, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27405. We release our P.O. Box into the spirit, P.O. Box 21642, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27420. The money comes from all over the world. It's coming in our mailbox. It's coming in our P.O. Box from all over the world. Money just keeps on coming. Um, for those who are giving to the building fund, I'm just going to uh, read these scriptures over you. Psalm 18, 19, he brought me forth also into a large place. He was delivering me because he was pleased with me and delighted in me. Glory to God. Psalm 66 and 12, you have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but you brought us out into a wealthy place. We received. 2 Samuel 7 and 10, moreover, I will anoint a place, appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them anymore as before time I received this. You plant us in our own place and we move no more. I receive this. It's working. Hallelujah. Property. I pray over the owners of this property that the grace of God and the peace of God and the revelation of who Jesus is becomes very strong and prevalent in their lives. I pray the grace of God and the favor of God over us to be able to obtain this property swiftly and quickly and without any types of delays. I thank God for his wisdom, his counsel, and his might. I thank God for his intervention. God is our source, and money cometh to us from the north, south, east, and west, and this ministry will never be broke another day in its life. I thank God for the opportunity to participate in this ministry. Amen. Amen. 